My name is Victoria. We are originally from the UK, but now reside in Abu Dhabi, owing to my husband's work. We were a family of five, and now we're a family of six. My name is Dr. Gauri Ramanathan. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynaecologist, uh, a fetal medicine specialist, and the chief medical officer here at King's College Hospital in Dubai. Victoria came to see me at uh, around 13 weeks of pregnancy. Her pregnancy was uh, uncomplicated otherwise until we got to the stage where we found that uh, she had a low-lying placenta uh, and a suspicion of placenta accreta. Now what is placenta accreta? Placenta accreta is essentially uh, when the placenta or the afterbirth uh, gets stuck a little bit too deeply into the uterine wall muscle resulting in quite a few complications. The reason we chose King's College Dubai, even when coming from Abu Dhabi, was because of the people. We knew given we had this complication in pregnancy, we would be able to achieve a high level of care from expert specialists in region. That the building is impressive and the wards are lovely and the technology is very advanced it was all just a bonus to us. Now, the complication or the problem with placenta equita is after the birth of the baby, the placenta just does not detach and does not come out. With that uh, difficulty in coming out, and if we attempt to take that placenta out, uh, women tend to have uh, a lot of bleeding, what we call massive hemorrhage. The behind the appointments consideration and planning that went into coordinating any eventuality that could have happened with our pregnancy was incredible. Dr. Gowry included Dr. Amit, who is an accretor specialist, um, Dr. Mohammed, our anaesthetist, and Dr. Ayman in radiology. Walking you through the journey of, uh, of Victoria's cesarean section. So uh, as soon as she comes in, uh, we had blood cross match. So that's basically uh, making sure that the blood that we do give her is uh, compatible to her in the future. Once that was all done, uh, Victoria was prepared and taken to theatre. Um, in theatre, we went straight to the cath lab. What we did in terms of anesthesia is we uh, provided a combined spinal epidural anesthesia so that's just a needle at the back um, and, and a continuous amount of pain relief so that she doesn't feel anything not just for a short period of time but for, for as long as we required her to be. Dr. Iman then proceeded to uh, perform his procedure which is a little balloon catheter into a particular artery uh, which is the main supply to the uterus. In the event that Victoria did bleed, uh, that catheter would be blown, the balloon would be blown up to stop blood towards the uh, to uterus and uh, reduce blood flow. Once those catheters were in, uh, we then proceeded to the main theatre. It was myself who did the, the surgery together with uh, a consultant colleague of mine, Dr. Amit, and uh, we proceeded with it in the anesthesia side, uh, Dr. Mohammed al Tuki um, and his team uh, on, on the uh, analgesia and, and pain relief. We started the operation within five minutes or so, uh, Victoria's little daughter was delivered and uh, very quickly after that, uh, we found that she started uh, having a lot of big vessels and bleeding um, and we hence uh, took a decision uh, very quickly to proceed with a cesarean hysterectomy. My name is Dr. Ayman Kamel. I am an interventional radiologist working in King's College Hospital uh, in Dubai. Interventional radiology is uh, maybe, let's call us the most advanced procedures in the field of medicine that uh, we usually uh, try to find a solution for all uh, the problems that patients might face in their life, particularly if surgery is quite difficult or uh, we need to do something which is uh, not major. It's like doing the job without creating any kind of scars in the body and with the minimal tools that can uh, bring us to the best results with a minimum invasion. For myself, uh, let's speak about the specific uh, case of Mrs. Victoria that I met. She's a very pleasant lady and uh, she had the definition of what's called placenta accreta. Sometimes it's a critical situation in the field of gynecology that sometimes the patient might lose her uterus or lose her life because sometimes the bleeding is quite devastating that uh, even uh, in open surgery, they cannot control the bleeding. So what will we do for her? We can offer her something which is quite nice, and this is to go and uh, place uh, a crossing 
what we call balloon catheters. These are just simple uh, catheters, plastic catheters, just uh, thin tubes that we place inside each of the uterine arteries and then we keep them standby. Uh, during the operation, if uh, some kind of an extra bleeding or some kind of uncontrollable bleeding happens, we can just go and inflate these balloons to block the blood flow from these vessels so that uh, the field becomes bloodless and the surgeon can proceed with uh, doing the cesarean section and removing the placenta and he can just repair what he wants to repair. I will never forget the amazing nurses on the NICU who looked after our new little one and the personal care and attention I was given on the HD ward and the main ward, which was rather a lovely room, um, was exceptional. I felt guided and supported all the time, whether it was medicines, pain relief, feeding, sleeping, or lack of. So with the diagnosis of placenta accreta, um, this is normally done in a government hospital. And the reason is because of the availability of blood. Um, uh, as most often than not, uh, massive transfusion and massive amounts of blood and blood products are required. This is not always necessarily the case, uh, as we have shown uh, here at King's College Hospital in Dubai. With careful planning, um, we are able to manage a high-risk complex case such as the placenta accreta here. Uh, and done so in a very successful manner. So such kindness was evident every step of our journey to welcoming our little girl into this world. And we feel incredibly grateful and privileged to have met and been cared for by such a team of excellent, exceptional people. Thank you. I think something I will also remember fondly always is seeing Dr. Gary always peeking over the surgical curtain while we were the other side of the operation just checking in on how we were doing.